So if you're watching this video because you were absent, I have a few pieces of good news for you. Number one, four slides. I know you were settling in for a big long lecture. You're not going to get it. Only four slides. Number two, this is a really good activity to work on at home because we worked on this on your own in class. So if you're watching this because you missed class, hey, you can work on it. And number three, if you were looking for that rainbow colored PowerPoint template, it's all yours. Use it whenever you want to. So I'm going to throw a new piece of technology at you or new to most of you. And it's called Sutori. And please allow me to explain why. In the 21st century, technology is moving so quickly. It's going to be an essential skill for all of you as you enter the job market to adapt to new technology quickly. And I've used Sutori in some prior classes, um, my AP US class, for instance, and they said positive things about it. So I hope you do the same. So in order to get to that site, please go to Sutori.com and make an account. It is free for a month, but this isn't going to take a month. And this platform allows you to create an interactive timeline. So I'm going to show you what is going to be contained in that timeline. And I do acknowledge it is very difficult to take an entire movement and narrow it down into a few things, but I did the best I could. So these are the 13 items on your timeline. You are noticing that a couple of them are in boldface. Those are the ones I really need you to dig into. Those are the ones I need you to know the most when you um, are all done with this. So uh, the first item is 1924. The Society for Human Rights in Chicago becomes the country's earliest known gay rights organization. Majority of people, not just people your age, adults, think the gay rights movement began in the 1960s. It actually started in 1924, which is probably new information to most. The second item is the biography of Harvey Milk. Harvey Milk is probably the most well-known gay rights activist in history. They even made a Hollywood movie about him starring Sean Penn. And when I was in San Francisco, I visited a museum and they have the suit that he wore and he's all over the place, murals and statues, the whole nine. So he's a big deal um, in the history of the gay rights movement. And then number three, Alfred Kinsey publishes Sexual Behavior in the Human Male, revealing to the public that homosexuality was far more uh, widespread than was commonly believed. And uh, his book was um, a game changer in terms of the culture. Uh, more sociological, but it's definitely pertinent. Now, 1951, the, uh, the Matashin Society is founded by Harry Hay, the founder of the gay rights movement. 1955, the first lesbian rights organization in the United States, the Daughter of, of Bilitis, was established in San Francisco in 1955. And I just mentioned San Francisco. I know a lot of people think San Francisco is a very gay-friendly town. It certainly is. There's a section of San Francisco called the Castro District, and when I visited there, uh, the lines in the street, instead of having white lines, were rainbow. And when you enter the Castro, there's rainbow lights and a bubble machine, um, that kind of thing. So that's not really a myth as it is uh, you know, a fact if you ever visit San Francisco. Bring money and a big appetite. Okay, that's all I'm going to say about San Francisco. 1969 is probably the most important item on here, the Stonewall riots. And there's a pretty high likelihood that does appear um, in the AP exam. It's a, I'm not saying 100%, we don't know, but it, I see it quite often in these AP guides. Okay, uh, number seven, uh, 1973, the American Psychiatric Association removes homosexuality from its official list of mental disorders. Uh, 1979, the National March on Washington for Lesbian and Gay Rights. Roughly 75,000 people showed up to exercise their First Amendment rights and protest. 1993, the Don't Ask, Don't Tell policy is instituted by the U.S. military. Very controversial when it came out. 1996 has two items, Romer versus Evans case, and then also DOMA, Defense of Marriage Act, was passed. And then the last two I really need you to know as well. Uh, 2003, the Lawrence versus Texas Supreme Court case, and then 2015, Obergefell versus Hodges case, which made uh, gay marriage legal in this country. Okay. So again, as you get after it on Sutori, please emphasize the bold terms. These are the ones I really need you to dig into. So I think at this point, you're probably sick of my voice and probably glad to have a day to, uh, just work by yourself. I know there's a certain contingency. My more introverted students are saying, thank you. Thank you very much. 
but I would like you to, um, you know, go through this list and then think about the gay rights movement under the context of the other civil rights movements that we have learned about, what makes it different, what's similar about it, all that good stuff. All right. So I look forward to seeing what you create and I appreciate you watching.